and there shall be peace on earth. Billy Meyer Semiaza Silver Star sent to December 14, 2002, 5.23 p.m. True human beings who wish for all mankind love, peace, freedom and harmony, and who do not succumb to the greed for power, self-aggrandizement, arrogance and maculomania, never use hatred, vindictiveness and destructive weapons to subjugate the world and other human beings. In fact, such attitudes, views, and approaches always have the tendency to revert to the contrary. Indeed, thorny, dominating and destructive weeds flourish, sprout and proliferate only where the bloodthirsty warriors of armies have passed through and have murdered, destroyed and annihilated in the name of and under the command of madmen, and under the banner of alleged love, harmony and provision of peace and freedom. Yet truly, all of this is only a pretense to cover up the greed for power, cowardly fear and cowardice, as well as the hatred and vindictiveness of those who instigate wars and create terror and bring unspeakable distress, brutalizing misery and unimaginable suffering upon human beings and the world. Weapons of all types, it started with the striking, cutting and piercing weapons, then came handguns, simple rifles, machine guns, then biological, chemical and nuclear weapons, up to tanks, bombs, rockets and weapons of fatal vibration and radiation are equivalent to fatal devices and implements bringing death, suffering and pain as well as destruction and annihilation. These can never be a tool or other means of a true human being but only of creatures who are degenerated in the worst form of being human, for whom a human life and everything created and achieved by creation and human beings has no value. And indeed, creatures who use such implements and weapons to attack, harm and terrorize others and murder as well as destroy, annihilate and conquer are out of hatred and bloodthirsty revenge, hardly deserve to be called human beings. In truth, they are worse and more evil than any degenerated bloodthirsty beast. And when human beings are attacked they have no other choice but to use the same implements and weapons to defend and protect their life, country and achievements as well as their relatives and belongings. And furthermore, they do good not to celebrate their victory but to remain calm and free of all craving, hatred and wrath, as well as to stay far away from vindictiveness. But should they celebrate instead, then they are no better than their assailants, for they enjoy the victory achieved through massacre, murder and homicide, terror, torture and destruction, annihilation, misery and the contempt of human dignity. In fact, they who celebrate a victory are just as hateful, vindictive, terrorizing, murderous, destructive and bloodthirsty as the assailants. Indeed, the world has no place for the bloodthirsty, the power greedy and the ones who kill, destroy and annihilate through war and terror, for they, being totally degenerated in the worst form of inhumanity, have no entitlement to scrape a living. Human beings who master true love, freedom, Harmony and peace do not place themselves in a position of power over their fellow human beings, for they walk among and identify with them even if they have the leadership, and in this way guide and instruct the people. They are not disposed to militarism or terrorism, and when they in pure defense lead a successful defense and fight a defensive battle they do not go overboard and fall into hatred, revenge, destruction, annihilation, anger and murder. Namely, they understand in every form of human dignity how to maintain the upper hand over the assailant and do not demand reparation out of hatred and revenge. For in their inner self and in their being human they have reached a stage that enables them to be capable of remaining free of these emotions, and free of madness, fury, violence, berserk rage and obstinacy. In fact, greed and wrath, like all forms of the worst in human degeneration, are the initial reasons for defeat. Thus, a true victory is attained by the one who is level-headed, restrained, calm and composed, and not by the one who is hot-headed and guided by hatred and revenge or by ambition and the greed for power. The true strategy of defense is acting while truly being unaffected by emotional influences, for this strategy preserves the clarity of thoughts and feelings and humanness, as well as clear, unambiguous actions whereby any occurrences of degenerations of the worst form of inhumanity are prevented. This kind of defense leads to a superiority, which is not comprehensible by the aggressor and thus cannot be fought against and eliminated. This is not only applicable in regard to war and defense but also in daily life and in the general and particular relations between human beings when any differences and aggressions occur. In fact, it is important that the strategy of defense remain unfathomable to the human being or enemy one has differences with in order that the defense can be effective.
Therefore, the form of defense has to be kept hidden to such an extent that all commands or movements will come as a surprise to the aggressor or opponent so that it becomes impossible for the opponent to take any steps in preparation. And exactly that is the factor necessary in order to be capable of pacifying the fellow human being or opponent and to teach him slash her a lesson for the better or defeat him slash her if the applied strategy of defense brings him slash her to reason and allows him slash her to recognize the effectiveness of the whole. The ability of a human being to create and also gain love, peace, freedom and harmony rests on the human being's unfathomable wisdom as well as in his or her actions imbued with thoughts and feelings laden with reason. These are values that actually leave no traces because they are formless elements and remain unaffected by everything and are invisible to human beings. Yet as lofty values they are capable of working wonders in the human being and the world if they become effective within and without. However, the wise human being conceals these values in their inner inscrutability, so that they are withheld from the fellow human being's observance and are effective in their formlessness, and cannot be destroyed by others. The human being is in this way able to be immensely delicate and subtle with his or her thoughts, feelings, hopes, yearnings, ideas and desires, and to reach the boundaries of formlessness without coming to harm. Thereby he she remains infinitely mysterious and is able to extend to the boundaries of soundlessness without being heard and understood by his or her fellow human being or opponent, and cannot be harmed and unfairly treated. In this way an advantage is gained, which can open the way to instruct the fellow human being in forcible forcelessness, or to defeat an opponent without war, terror, murder and manslaughter taking place. So that the words, and there shall be peace on earth, can finally become truth among mankind. The true human being who is imbued with wisdom and lives with the environment in love, peace, harmony and freedom, recognizes a plane of truth that is given by creation in regard to nature, as well as its knowledge and its resulting essence of wisdom. For this reason a conflict with a fellow human being cannot come into being and a victory over an opponent and fellow human being cannot appear in a form that is visible to them. Indeed, that is easily said but extremely difficult to achieve. Because as a rule the human being's selfishness and egoism are far greater and more powerful than his or her reason and willpower to undergo the necessary refinement, which will only be achieved through extremely hard work by a few. A true human being in the fullest sense of the word is able to and has to rely solely on himself slash herself in regard to his or her path of evolution and his or her total progress. In every respect the human being bears the responsibility alone, thus he she alone has to observe and to know everything, which means he she has to see, hear, discern and know what other human beings are not able to discern, see, hear and know. That indicates superiority and ingenuity, and exactly through these qualities a progressive and evolutionary gain will be achieved that makes the human being invulnerable and able to defend against all unreasonableness, hatred, vindictiveness non-love, non-freedom and non-peace. Yet to obtain these virtues the path has to be pursued that leads to resolving the existing problems with fellow human beings and the environment, which certainly is not an easy process but a very difficult one indeed. Problems of any kind, be it fear, hatred, revenge, cowardice, terror, lust for power and retaliation, or whatever else, cannot and may not be simply filed or buried in one's memory or subconsciousness, with the hope that they simply disappear. In fact, the problems remain existent and maliciously push into the foreground again and again causing uncontrollable harm. In the worst case the consequences will be war, hatred, vindictiveness, murder, greed for power, and striving to gain power, as well as terror, fanaticism, or homicide of the most evil form. To fight against these evil forms of degenerations is more or less unsuccessful. Thus it is not possible to simply file away these problems in one's memory or subconsciousness, for they need a clear resolution and dissolution. The only way that this can happen is by leading the existing problems into an acute state, where their particulars and subtleties can be consciously examined, analyzed, cleared up and dissolved. Putting problems into an acute state means that problems whatever they are, whether they relate to themselves or to a single fellow human being, or to several of them, or to an entire nation, the environment, or even to the whole of mankind, are tackled in the way whereby they are consciously brought forward and made to exist in the present where they are recognizable and acute. In this way they become highly active and break forth like an explosion. 
However, that has to happen in a quiescent state, in where the problems that are becoming acute become mobile only in the thoughts and feelings and do not break out externally. The problems, therefore, are not becoming externally effective but are only directed inwards towards the thoughts, feelings and emotions. And as the problem's eruption takes place consciously occurring only in the inside, since there were no external factors present such as other people, activities, situations, etc., this is called a quiescent state, because quiet prevails externally and the fight only takes place internally. The problems don't have to be fought and overcome in an external condition that is unreal, for they are not externally existent. Thus this process only takes place internally acute in thoughts, feelings and emotions, and can be consciously controlled, analyzed, worked upon and dissolved iota for iota. Therefore, all emotions as well as problems of any kind are in an external quiescent state when they are placed into an acute condition in the innermost self. Which is why it is also taught that emotional problems and any other forms of problems can only be worked upon and dissolved in their quiescent state. All emotions, thoughts, feelings and problems of any kind that are consciously and inwardly placed in an acute condition will intensify when they are being analyzed and worked upon to achieve dissolution and neutralization. It is possible that the forms of intensity could be much stronger and higher than when they uncontrollably burst to the outside. Therefore, for some human beings the whole process of overcoming problems will become an almost insurmountable matter when the needed motivation obtained through instruction by oneself or another person, as well as the necessary willpower and initiative, are weakly formed, or non-existent. For this reason, only a few will follow the hard path of cognition and self-knowledge as well as self-realization and will overcome all the evil and wrong within themselves that keeps away true love, freedom and harmony. And if the human being is not able to overcome all the evil and wrong within himself or herself then he or she will not be able to contribute to the situation that enables the individual as well as all mankind to say, and there shall be peace on earth. Should the human being want to create peace on earth, then each individual human being has to begin to walk on the path of his or her own inner purification and make a stand against his or her emotions, thoughts and feelings, as well as all his or her problems that relate to hatred, obsession with revenge, fanaticism, sectarianism, religion, desire for power and control, fear, cowardice, addiction and greed, war and terror, murder, torture, capital punishment and obsession with profit and so forth. He she has to dissolve and be free of them completely in order to allow true love and harmony as well as peace and freedom to take their due place. And thereby one has to consider that one value cannot exist by itself, for each single value depends on the others. Thus love is dependent on peace, freedom and harmony, harmony is dependent on love, freedom and peace, peace is dependent on love, harmony and freedom as well as freedom on peace, harmony and love. And truly, only all these values combined result in a complete whole that is comprehended by every human being as happiness and joy, and brings pleasure in existing, and, in dignity, a great respect for life. Unfortunately only a small minority knows about the value of love, peace, harmony and freedom and understands their significance in external life and in the life within. For some people, freedom only means that one can do whatever one wants to do or does not want to do yet especially in respect to freedom that does not apply. Freedom embodies far more than the individual is able to imagine both in the life within and in the external life. In fact, freedom is not just a general concept for all that a human being does as well as for the fulfillment of all those things, needs, cravings, desires and wishes, which he she always wants to see fulfilled. Freedom means far more. For among other things it also embodies the actual frankness of the human being that enables him slash her to be open and sincere in everything towards himself slash herself as well as towards the external environment and his or her fellow human beings without fear and anxiety, and without having to falsify the facts or having to conceal them to betray himself slash herself or his or her fellow human beings. Love, peace, harmony and freedom are facts and values every human being should be aware of, and indeed has to be aware of. Yet exactly in this he she fails, for long ago in ancient times he she lost his or her sense to be aware, and to look within himself slash herself for these lofty values of genuineness and grandeur. Wise men and prophets who taught these values were reviled and vilified, or even murdered. 
and all the dignitaries and office bearers of religions and governments were intentionally helpful in doing so, and continue in the same way to this very day. Since ancient times these mighty and powerful rulers in politics and religions have been the ones who were responsible, and still are today, for the populations of every country being and continuing to be ignorant. And still today the mighty and the powerful, the ones governing, as well as the religious rulers and their representatives in every office continue to neglect their duty to the peoples and to the human being as an individual. They fail to make an effort to teach and to enlighten the peoples in the framework of the correct way of life and of the connection of all matters that relate to the consciousness. Their only truthful endeavor seems to be to burden the nation's people with all kinds of taxes for the needed remittance of horrendous pays, which enable them to live a life in joy and splendor. Yet that is not all they are at work at various places to betray and sell out their own country, spread war and terror as well as death, destruction and ruin, and, with billions, finance completely senseless projects and insanely squander the people's hard-earned tax monies. And above all, they make no effort to bring about true love and freedom as well as harmony and peace, so that it could finally be said, and there shall be peace on earth. Whatever a human being at any time does, he she has to do it for his or her own benefit as well as for the benefit of his or her fellow human being, and thus for the whole of mankind as well as for immediate and future posterity. However, in every respect the benefit rests within the effective knowledge and its resulting essence of wisdom that will be achieved through true love, freedom, peace and harmony wherein courage and compassion as well as humanness are established. And this will imbue the human being with joy and make him slash her strong and just. It is superficial and selfish to act only in the fulfillment of cravings and desires, which always results in evil consequences. Therefore, it has to be understood and comprehended that only a togetherness based on a common ground and the mutual understanding as well as the joining together of all human beings on earth meet all those preconditions in which true love and harmony, peace and freedom are able to take root and become reality. Then the human being will be able to say without fear, and there shall be peace on earth, the end.